My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video we're going to discuss the theory behind the triple sugar iron test. And we're going to use something called triple sugared iron agar. The triple sugar iron test is very important and very useful. In fact, it's able to do two main things, which we're going to talk about. First of all, you can actually differentiate between lactose fermenting bacteria and glucose fermenting bacteria, which we're actually going to look at a red and yellow color change to be able to do that. And the other thing we're also going to be able to do is determine whether or not bacteria can produce hydrogen sulfide gas. And I have here uh, the process of how bacteria can actually produce hydrogen sulfide gas. Um, we start here with sulfate, which is actually um, from ferrous sulfate that we add. Sulfate can then be ultimately through a series of three enzymes converted into hydrogen sulfide gas. Um, it's sort of a similar process to nitrate reduction that we saw in a previous lesson, but in this case sulfate is indirectly reduced to sulfite and then sulfite is reduced to hydrogen sulfide gas. Okay, but perhaps even more important for us here is we can actually use this test to determine whether or not bacteria are able to ferment lactose or ferment glucose. And to do that, we're going to look at this slide. And I'm going to hopefully explain uh, how we're able to do this. Okay, in addition to adding this ferrous sulfate for the sulfate, um, we're also going to be adding three sugars, this, thus the name triple sugar. The three sugars are lactose, sucrose, and glucose the latter of which is a monosaccharide, and lactose and sucrose are disaccharides. However, bacteria have different capacities to ferment those. Okay. Now, what's important is that the sugar, when it's fermented, any of these, uh, we tend to produce acid. So when sugars are fermented, we actually form acids, so things like lactic acid. Also in the mixture, we also have peptones. Peptones can be broken down by bacteria, but instead of forming acid end products, as we see in sugars, peptone metabolism actually forms alkaline end products. Okay? In addition to these things, we also have a pH indicator, and this specific one is called phenol red. Okay? If we have an abundance of alkaline end products, there's a tendency for it to uh, turn cherry red. For example, this is a good example of the cherry red right here. Okay, so if we have a majority of alkaline end products, such as from peptone metabolism, it turns cherry red. However, if we have a majority of acid end products, so from sugar fermentation, it'll form a yellow color, like you can see right here on the far left. Okay, now the peptone metabolism is always occurring. So peptones are always being broken down by the bacteria but depending on the bacteria's ability to ferment the sugars, this will not always be visible. So let's first consider a case where we have no sugar fermentation, meaning all we're doing is we're going to see uh, peptone metabolism. So if we all we see is peptone metabolism, then all we'll see is alkaline end products. And we mentioned that when there's alkaline end products, it should turn cherry red. Well, if we're not doing anything else and all we're doing is forming those alkaline end products, then this is what we would observe over here. So if we had a situation where we got this result over here on the far right, that would be indicative of no sugar fermentation. All we would be breaking down is peptones. Okay? Now, if we can ferment sugars, we're going to have some degree of yellow. And in fact, the degree of yellow that we have indicates which sugar is actually being fermented. Let's consider the two cases where we have acid end products from sugar fermentation. The first case is if lactose is fermented, then we should have a large amount of acid. And the slant and butt will both be yellow. Okay, the slant is basically the top part. Okay, so in this over here, the slant is cherry red, over here the slant is yellow, the butt is always the bottom part. So over here the butt is yellow, over here the butt is cherry red. If we are able to ferment lactose, we're going to form a large amount of 
acid end products, and so the entire thing should be yellow. So if we get a result like this on the left, this is a very important one, then that's indicative of lactose fermentation because we form a large amount of acid end products and acid turns the phenol red yellow. The reason we don't see any of the cherry red from the peptone breakdown is because the acid actually masks the alkaline end products. So all we see is yellow. So this over here on the left, lactose fermentation. Okay. Now, what if we don't ferment lactose, but instead we only ferment glucose? Well, it turns out glucose will still form acid end products. However, there will not be enough acid to mask all of the alkaline end products. So therefore, what will happen is the slant will actually be cherry red. This is because there's not enough acid to completely mask the alkaline end products from peptone breakdown. But we will still see yellow at the butt, at the bottom of this, um, due to the acid end products from the glucose fermentation. So the main things to be able to recognize are lactose fermentation, in which case it completely turns yellow, or a situation like this, in which case the butt is yellow and the slant is cherry red, which is indicative of glucose fermentation and no lactose fermentation. Okay, And so that's the basis by which we can actually determine um, whether or not we have a lactose fermenter or a glucose fermenter. What else can the triple sugar iron test tell us? It turns out that, that the agar that we use for this, the TSI agar to be precise, also contains dissolved ferric ions, which are iron cations in the three plus state. And any hydrogen sulfide that is produced by bacterial metabolism um, will react with that with those ferric cations, those iron three pluses. And it turns out that when hydrogen sulfide reacts with the iron, it forms a black precipitate. And so you can see that everywhere in these four tubes where black is produced, they've designated it hydrogen sulfide. Okay, So to put it simply, the triple sugar iron test will tell us basically two things. What type of sugar, if any, the bacteria are able to ferment, lactose or glucose only, and whether or not the bacteria can actually produce hydrogen sulfide, as indicated by this black precipitate after the hydrogen sulfide reacts with iron to form ferrous sulfide. Okay. One more thing I'd also like to add that's clinically relevant is if we have a lactose non-fermenter, but it ferments glucose, so that an example would be this right here. So if we have a lactose non-fermenter, uh, this could also be a potential enteric pathogen. And examples of bacteria that might produce a result like this would be Salmonella or Shigella. And we know that Salmonella in particular, hopefully you've heard, you, know, you get Salmonella from eating raw meat or things like that, whatever. We don't have to go into that. But understand that this can actually be cl clinically relevant to actually have the potential of having either Salmonella or Shigella, okay, if we have a lactose non-fermenter like this. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. This has been triple sugar iron. Make sure to also watch the demonstration video of this for more information. Thank you.